Hey, this is Lee, this is Politics Girl, and today we are talking cock. This is. <laughs> Oh, that's a funny joke to me. Okay, uh, so there's been a lot of talk lately about the Iowa caucuses that are on Monday and how important they are to the presidential nomination. And I realized, listening to all of it, that I had a lot of questions. What is a caucus? What is a primary? Are they really that important? What's my role in the whole thing, if anything at all? First of all, I think what's important to understand is that a caucus and a primary are basically two different ways of deciding the same thing. Which presidential hopeful is the most liked and should be voted for in the national convention in the summer? Caucuses and primaries can be looked at basically as the first step in the playoffs to the Super Bowl, which is the presidential election. In California, where I live, we vote in primaries, which is basically like every other election you've ever had. You go to the ballot box, you check off who you want, you're done. And every registered voter in the state is permitted to vote. So it never occurred to me that it might be different elsewhere. And that was wrong. In certain states like Oklahoma, Louisiana, Idaho, Florida, the primaries are only open to registered party members. So if you're an independent or you're undeclared, you basically have no say in those states as to your presidential nomination. Other states, like Iowa, don't do primaries. They do what's called a caucus, essentially a party meeting um, by a precinct or district or county, and caucuses are open to any registered voter in the party, but they're time consuming and they only happen at one time um, on a certain day, and so basically only one in four voters even make it to a caucus. And that's the thing about a caucus, you have to actually attend. People make speeches, they try and sway you one way or the other, it can take hours. And after the discussions, um, Republicans do a secret ballot and Democrats actually have to go and stand in groups in whatever gym or town hall or public venue that they're in and try and get people over to their side and to switch sides and to be on this side or come over to me and this person's better. And if you have less than 15% of the vote in that precinct, you're not even eligible for a delegate. So if I came and I wanted a party member who I wanted a candidate and he's only 10%, I either have to go and stand with another group or I can go home um, and just not be counted. Some states, again, like Iowa, um, allot delegates depending on the number of votes each candidate receives. So a third place win will still receive a percentage of the delegates from that state. Whereas there's other states like Ohio, which are winner take all states, where the delegates all go to the winner of that state. So if you come in second in Ohio, you get zero delegates at the national convention. Whereas if you come first, you get all of them. It's kind of a mini electoral college in that way. I should clarify that the precinct caucuses are only the first step in a four-step process on the way to the national convention. So precinct delegates go on to elect district delegates. District delegates vote for state delegates, and then the state delegates are the ones that go on to represent their candidate in the national convention, where they will then vote for the presidential nominee. By the time we get to the national convention in the summer, the presidential candidate has basically been decided, um, and the vote becomes merely a formality. In fact, conventions have actually been referred to as coronations rather than elections. Although <clears throat> this year it could be a bit different because um, all these out-of-the-box candidates are polling really well. So there's a real chance that competition between Donald Trump and whoever it is or Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders will actually come right down to the votes on the convention floor itself with the powers that be having the final say. This will be particularly evident in the Democratic Party because they have what's called superdelegates who can ultimately make the final call and disregard what everyone else kind of wants. But I will explain that closer to the election itself.